What's going on guys from Cartagena, Colombia. In today's video, we're gonna be taking you all around Cartagena. There's a bunch of places you can access by boat and by car, and it's going to be an amazing next couple days. We have the whole squad here who's gonna be taking on Cartagena. Yeah! Let's go! Yeah! Hey! guys and the trip in Colombia continues our next destination is going to be Cartagena where we're going to spend the next five days exploring this amazing beach town we have a lot of things planned so we'll see you guys once we get there flying in from Medellin to Cartagena is only about a one hour flight so pretty quick to travel from one side to the other in Colombia hello Cartagena we have made it after a quick flight down time to go explore this city All right guys, so we just arrived to our spot here in Cartagena, Colombia, where we're going to be spending the next five days. We have a group of about 12 of us who are all splitting this beautiful Cartagena mansion we're about to show you guys. All right, let me figure out how to open this thing. Yo, what's good? The squad has arrived, come on in the mansion. Yo, let's go. Let's go, what's going on, man? Max. Tito, what up? Happy little Hey, look who made it, what's good, bro? <laughs> oh, he brought this bigger dude. The one big thing about traveling is the more people you go with, the higher ticket price items you can purchase at still a very low price. So we got a beautiful place with an awesome uh, set of amenities that I'm about to show you guys right now. One thing I wanna mention guys is we're going to give you a quick tour of the mansion that we're staying in and then we're going to show you 10 things to do here in Cartagena. These things are not in any specific order from best to worst so make sure you stick around till the end. This was just the order that we ended up doing on our five day itinerary in Cartagena. So when you walk in the front door, you have a full open kind of chill area. You got Brian over here just killing it on the laptop. Yo. We have, we have our man Jorge over here taking care. Nice little pool to dip the feet in if we'd like. And we wrap around all the way. So let's do this. Show you guys what else we have in here. Oh yeah. There's a little, there's a little dungeon pad down here. Got a nice size banyo there. And we keep going with the tour. Going up here. Got another room here. Plenty of space for chilling. And on to the next, oh, but I think in here, Fiesta spot, let's go. And then as we go up the next level, there's a spot to hang out here. You have about four bedrooms right in this area, all with their own private bathroom, closet space and everything. And then you have a balcony out front to look out into the courtyard and the park. Another bedroom on this side. And then coming up along here, there's the kitchen we just passed. Another bedroom, another bedroom. And here's my bedroom. I chose the best one since I found it. Haha. <laughs> so super funny story. This place is uh, such a big casa that I couldn't even find the other bedroom. So when the owner came over to check up and see how things are, I was like, oh, where are the other bedrooms? I couldn't find them. It happened to be this spiral staircase right here. And then in here, we have the room. Mi amigo, mi, mi pasero está aquí. You know, ¿Sabes pasero? ¿Qué me dice? Yes. Muy, uh, muy, muy bien, amigo. Hey, pasero, que chimba, ¿sí o qué? Sí, por supuesto, amigo. That was the house tour. Now let's go and explore Cartagena. All right, guys, so the first thing on this list of things to do here in Cartagena, Colombia, is you'll want to make sure you make time to visit the walled city if you're not already staying in there and spend some time strolling around the street. As you can see behind me, this is just a block away from where we're staying and it looks kind of like Guatape down in the district with the umbrella. So I wonder if that's a Colombian thing. Drop a comment if you know. It is your picturesque view of Colombia from streets with beautiful colors to dining experiences everywhere, just to getting a feel of how the locals live their life in this area here in Cartagena. So you'll find many different streets you can wander around and it's a pretty safe place to walk around. The whole time we were there, we felt very safe and especially during the day. And so speaking of restaurants, you'll definitely wanna make sure you try out the Colombian cuisine. We started with our first restaurant trying to find a really cheap meal that was close to us, somewhere around $5 US. And so we found this chicken place. In Cartagena, first restaurant we went to, recommended by our Airbnb host, and they just sell this really good looking chicken right here. So this was 18,000 pesos, which is just around $5 US with the current exchange rate. 
and you get this massive slab of chicken. This is half of a full chicken, and it is time to just chow down. But you have many different options. Cartagena can be very luxurious if you'd like, and so we did some experimenting with some of the best restaurants around Cartagena that ranged between $25 to $40 or $50 US per person. So not too bad given they were some of the nicer restaurants down here in Cartagena. Famous Cafe Del Mar on the walled city, the ancient walled city of Cartagena, Colombia, right now. Awesome ambience, good vibes, good drinks, nice sunset with the crew. Let's go! Yes, let's go, let's go. So guys, we just finished up an amazing evening at Cafe Del Mar. And so I wanna share with you the next thing to do is to go out in Cartagena. You can't go to Cartagena and not experience the nightlife. But first, let's start out with a little pregame at the Casa. Let's go. What a night. See you guys in the AM. Oh, buenos dias, guys. Today is a big day because we are about to go sailing all around Cartagena and head over to Playa Chalon. All right, guys, we are here in Cartagena and we're about to start the biggest day of the trip where we're taking a three-level catamaran all around to a bunch of different places outside of Cartagena and then we're gonna cruise over to Chalon with the squad. So with today's yacht rental, we're going to be taking it first to the Rosario Islands. So Rosario Islands are super beautiful. They're about a 45 minutes to an hour boat ride away. So we're gonna do a little partying, chilling on the boat to get there and then check out the island, do some swimming around there. We can't do too much right now because COVID's going on, but we can at least still see some of the islands and show you guys how beautiful this place is. Then we're gonna make our way over to Chalon Party Island, which is super cool. And once again, normally outside of COVID days, it would be a huge party island, but right now you can still have awesome boat parties, still go to the island for food and check it out. But guys, I'm not gonna share with you too much in this video about these two spots. And that's specifically because I have made a whole video about the experience when we rented a yacht for about $180 per person to take over to both of those spots. So I'll drop the link in the description below so you guys can check that video out. Trust me, it'll be well worth it. It is a lot of fun and super cool place that you want more details on. Alright guys, our next thing to do here in Cartagena, Colombia is to head over to the famous Playa Blanca. Playa Blanca, we got El Jefe, aka Ranger Rick. He's got the recommendation for this place. Tell us the best thing about this place, bro. You gotta stay, if you're going to Playa Blanca, you gotta make sure you stay the night because after about five o'clock, all the tourist boats leave, the buses leave, and you have pretty much an entire beach to yourself for the sunset food, great service. It's just an awesome place to be with a group of friends. That sounds amazing. It's only one hour away from Cartagena, so we have the whole group of us, 10 of us, in the van right now cruising over. It's about $100 to get all of us there, which is a little expensive, but you know, when you split it 10 ways, that's only 10 bucks per person. So you can probably get it cheaper if you hop in a cab with a couple friends. That's another way to do it. So, all right guys, we will see you once we get over to Playa Blanca. Vamos a la playa. We have arrived. What's up, we on Playa Blanca. We out here and one thing I wanna let you know, when you first arrive here and you get dropped off, you're going to get bombarded, especially if you're, as they call a gringo like us, a foreigner, someone that looks like you might have some money to spend whether you do it or not. So just be prepared for that. Everyone's gonna wanna help you out. Everyone's gonna wanna take care of you. But just keep going towards your destination. It's really easy to get from place to place here. We are walking to the end of the beach where we're staying at our hostel and it's only about $17 per person per night. Some of the hostels can be booked online, but it sounds like based on Moreland's experience, a lot of the hostels 
Yeah, a lot of them you need to just show up here, grab your spot. Blanca has a lot of things to do from all of these different bars you can stop at, grab a drink, they have street vendors everywhere if you want fresh fruit, you want fresh drinks, whatever it might be, it is ready for you. Also, there's boat tours, there is delicious restaurants, and it feels still very untouched. Even though, as you can see, there's a lot of people around me everywhere. We got fruit baskets coming up behind me. There is a lot going on, but it seems like it's really only known by Colombians. And that's the really nice part, because right now, we are, I think, the only foreigners here, which makes it that much more of an experience because, well, it really puts me to the test with my Spanish skills, especially because only Brian and I are the ones that know how to speak Spanish. Como estas, Brian? Well, I'm living my best life. Oh, you're doing a little vlog? <laughs> I thought it was on you. I was gonna pull it back oh. for you. How is it, bro? Delicious, best fruit that they have ever had. That's between me and you. Only five dollars and fifty cents, roughly, with a conversion rate about twenty-five thousand Colombian pesos to have a carved-out pineapple with your cocktail of choice in it. Yum! Love Colombia. Cheers! Cheers. Cheers. All right, guys, we had an awesome time spending the night in Playa Blanca. The crazy part about this place is around 10 p.m. It's completely shut down. I think that's mainly because of the pandemic, but in general, from what we picked up on, it's mainly a couple's island, families and things like that. But us being fun Americans, we turned up every bar we went to, which was only one bar, and they loved us. We had a really good time turning up here. And now, hopefully you can even hear this, now we're cruising back to Cartagena via boat. So there's two ways to get here. Yesterday, we showed you guys the taxi route, and that cost us around 100 US. Now we're taking a boat, and it's costing us about $15 less at about $85 for two boats that each hold five people. So we've got the squad here cruising. Life jackets just in case we flip this thing. Just kidding. moments here we are what it looks like now getting in another boat <laughs> on our way to Cartagena. I'm pretty confused if you can't tell. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that's the move. This journey is non-stop halfway to where we are right now. A boat pulls up, our captain jumps into the other one, new captain hops on, no clue why. And then we think we're getting dropped off in Cartagena, but really we're just somewhere way outside of Cartagena. And then we just merge to another large boat where we're all on it together. We're getting yelled at Propina for everyone, and we're like, what about the hundred dollars we already paid? So this is the life in Colombia when you take the uh, less traveled path back to Cartagena. <laughs> <laughs> but this beats the hell out of being stuck in the taxi. That's yeah, oh, that's, that's for damn sure. After a few boats, a few sore backs, a lot of bumps, and a crazy last leg of the boat ride. We arrived back to Cartagena. We go shower at the crib, and then after, go check out more of this beautiful city. I'm grabbing one of those puppies. Excuse me, amigo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it doesn't get any more fresh than this. That's lemonade, six of them for 10 pesos. What does that come out to, boss? Like three bucks. <laughs> All right guys, after a little rest and recovery, after an amazing night in Playa Blanca and a very crazy boat ride getting back, we are all ready and recovered, about to explore Castillo San Felipe. None of us actually know much about it yet. Our man, uh, Jorge, from the Airbnb actually gave us this recommendation and it's only about 15 minutes away, walking distance from where we're staying. So it looks beautiful walking up on it right now and we'll tell you more once we get up there. 
It's important to mention that everything, almost everything in Colombia is negotiable, except things like prices on a menu. Unless you're in like a uh, super touristy place, they might give you the tourist menu, but at most restaurants, prices are fixed. But when it comes to street vendors, definitely you can negotiate. Uh, besides like the establishment, like uh, the castle behind us, that's not negotiable. Most things are, like if you're buying clothes or things like that, make sure to negotiate. All right guys, we just made it into Castillo San Felipe, and the entrance fee per person was 25,000 pesos, which is roughly seven US dollars. And then for our whole group to get a tour guide, it was an additional 70,000 pesos, so about 20 bucks roughly. And we have our man here, and the good news is he speaks English too. Alright guys, we are entering into a very narrow tunnel. It's probably about five and a half feet tall. And as you can see, there's basically almost no light in here. How are we doing back there? Except for the lights. Man. Yeah, except the, yeah, except the added lights. Oh, you know what? If I take my sunglasses off, you can see much better. Highest point right there in Cartagena. Now it's a museum. All right, guys, we're about halfway through the tour. It's about a 50-minute tour with our guide here. And it is a really cool place. This castle was actually built, or fortress, if you will, was actually built between the 1500s to the 1700s. So originally, when it was first built, it was a smaller version of what you can see today. And then now it has been expanded around the 1700s time frame. So there's a lot of history packed in this place. If you like that, it's you know a lot of fun to learn about the culture and history of how Cartagena came about, what they had to do for defense mechanisms with a fortress like this. The last thing I'll mention as well is even if you don't like history, from every part of this fortress, you have beautiful views of Cartagena. It's so worth it. The photos, the videos we have of here are stunning. Again about okay. the flag. Colombian flag. The yellow color represents the natural resources. The blue color represents the heaven and ocean. And the red color represents the blood shed by the hero in the independence of the day. And after the tour, last but not least for number 10, you'll want to visit the flag at the top of the castle. This is one of the most picturesque spots to get a photo in all of Cartagena and you're already there checking out the castle, so you might as well hike right over to the top here. It is a beautiful spot. Guys, Cartagena was amazing. Unfortunately, five days is not enough to see this beautiful city. There's so much to see and do, but I can confidently tell you that I will for sure be returning. These things were just a small fraction of all the things you can do when visiting Cartagena, but I guarantee you'll have a good time. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button so you see more videos like this. Hit that subscribe button and you won't miss any. We'll see you guys in the next video.